Dystocia, or sometimes we call it Anazaka. And here's a picture of what we're talking about. Well, that's kind of a disturbing picture. What you're looking at there is a water baby. Sometimes they're called walrus babies, rubber babies. But they, they've got this um, huge swelling. It might just be on their head. It might be their entire body. It depends on how severe uh, the, the edema is. But basically, this is a fluid that is built up out of the skin and has made this puppy to be you know, two times three times normal size. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not a common thing. Um, I have never had a, a water baby myself, so I haven't had first-hand experience of that. I'm glad. Um, but, you know, I do see this. I don't know what the prevalence of this, you know, it might be one in a hundred puppies, possibly something like that. When you see it, you know, it could be just one puppy in the litter, which is, I think is more than norm. You could have a, a, a couple of puppies, one that's really severe and one that's not severe, or you might have the entire litter that's affected. Um, these puppies, uh, almost always, these are going to show up through C-section because the, the water puppy blocks the canal up. And because of that, um, the, you can't give birth and you're forced into a C-section. So the majority of these are seen by C-section. Um, so, you know, what, what's the... What's the causes of this? Well, it's not very clear. I mean, certainly, certainly, you know, there, there's a, um, a genetic link, possibly. So that's one possibility. Second one is a high sodium diet. The third one is being stuck in the birth canal. I don't think much credence to that one. Birth canal, I don't think much of that one personally. Because the majority of times that I've seen this, they've been born by C-section. They never got to the point where they've even been in the birth canal. But anyway, people are talking about that. Um, what else have I got on my list of things here? Um, liver failure in the, in the puppy. Hepatitis, liver failure. The puppy's had liver failure. Um... There are some things that definitely are not true. Some people think that the mother's drinking too much water. That one is a bunk. That one is not, not that's, in fact, you want your mother to be drinking lots of water. Uh, it's a, an important thing. So don't hold, be holding back water because you think this might be most. And then another one is, is the mother can't correctly metabolize proteins metabolize proteins um okay so there's your there's just get a paper towel so i can rub this off those are the causes or potential causes um by the way another cause is you know this genetic thing i mean there are some dogs that are more presupposed to having this uh, flat face briso phasalic dogs French Bulldogs, English Bulldogs, Mastiffs, uh, Bullies, apparently Yorkshire Terriers as well. Um, and there's, uh, you see it occasionally in Labradors, which aren't bracer for Salic at all. You see it every now and then in German Shepherds. So there is a more frequency in flat-faced dogs, but it's across the board. You could see this in, in any litter. Okay, let's get this off the board. So we'll start talking about um, diagnosis. Well, look, you know, You'd like to know this is happening before birth. I'm not sure exactly why, because there's not a lot you can do about this. Um, but, so we're taking care of courses. Diagnosis would be possible weight gain in mother, abnormal weight gain. Look, <laughs> just, you know, it's there in the literature. Exactly how you'd be able to determine that you've got a water baby on board because of weight gain is beyond me because Mums are going to put on weight, and it depends on the number of puppies anyway. So I think that one's a, I don't think much of that one. But anyway, it's in the literature. Okay. Um, right. So apparently you can see a water ring around the nipples. A water ring around nipples. Never seen a picture of that one, so I don't know. Uh, you can see discharge from vulva. 
Again, not particularly useful because you'll th see things like mucus plug and sometimes it's quite common to see a certain amount of drainage from um, a pregnant mum in the last five to ten days of birth uh, of, of pregnancy anyway. So uh, unfortunate thing here is I don't think any of this is really of much value to you and you getting all it's going to do is you're going to see things that are normal and get scared that you've got a water baby on the way. So I don't think the one thing that you can do, and this would be an ultrasound. So an ultrasound, 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 at about five days prior. If there's a single water baby in there and it really is swollen, an ultrasound could well tell the difference between one puppy and other puppies. So you could, this is something that does make some sense. X-ray, no good at all. X-rays do not detect fluids like water. They don't show up on the X-ray at all. So you can't do anything with an X-ray. So an ultrasound, so why would you even do this? Because you had a history possibly of having a water baby before. I think that's the time that this kind of makes sense. Because, look, if, you've, if you know, the example would be that you've got a dog that's gonna have a natural birth. You're unaware there's a water baby present and you're in trouble. Um, you may not be in trouble for the first puppy out because it might be in front of the water baby. But the moment the water baby gets in the birth canal, the whole thing's plugged up and that is done. It's C-section time. So to know about that beforehand or be aware of the fact there might be a water baby, that would be useful information. So if you've had a history of this, then I would say an ultrasound five days prior would make some sense. Okay. Um, so that is diagnosis. So now treatment. What do you do? Um, well, the puppy's born. It's obviously got problems. Most of those puppies die. They're still born. They're dead at birth. You're done. But some of those puppies are alive. And, you know, you can decide whether you're going to try anything or not. Look, there could well be other defects. It's quite common to see cleft palates. If you've got a dog that is, or a puppy, that, that is a, a, you know, a water baby and it has a cleft palate, I would not in a million years try to do anything for that dog. I'd let that dog go. I, mean, I think that's a, a lost cause. But if the dog is, you know, if it is alive, does have a heartbeat, then typically what you do is you give Lasix, which is a diuretic. And what it does is it gets fluids to be peed out through the kidneys. So to do this, you give an IV. It's gotta be done at birth. You monitor that puppy and hopefully within one to three hours, it's breathing normally. It's breathing on its own, but you're gonna to have to put this puppy probably into a incubator with oxygen to start with anyway. You'd have to stimulate urination because it can't do it by itself. No puppies can, no newborns can stimulate urination and evaluate where you are within 24 hours. So some of these puppies apparently can be normal puppies. If it's not a severe case, it's probably worth a go. Severe case, probably not going to, probably going to be dead, probably not going to survive. It may have under, other underlying issues that are going on because it may have been caused by things like liver failure in the first place. So those are pretty tenuous. Um, and I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that you shouldn't try, but I am saying be aware of what the, you know, what the outcome is going to be. What, what you don't want is you really don't want to spend the next, you know, 72 hours constantly monitoring this puppy for this puppy to have no quality of life, you know, have uh, severe problems um, and not just, you know, should never have been allowed to get to that situation. So, you know, sometimes euthanasia, it makes sense. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, uh, that's your choice. Obviously, you've got to determine that. Get some advice from a vet as well, what you're doing on that. Okay. Um, so what can we do to prevent this? What can we do to make it not happening? Well, the first thing would be, and the most probably useful bit of information here that you're gonna get on this little module is gonna be if you've had a water baby before, don't breed those two dogs together because there is potentially quite likely some kind of a genetic link. And if that is a true statement and you breed to a different stud, then that genetic link hopefully is gone and you go on to have normal babies. Now, does that mean that you should go back to the stud owner and start complaining to them? No. 
it's one of those freak things. If it is a genetic thing, it means that what you've got is, well, first thing is, is anybody who had a water baby should not be using that baby for breeding. If it survives it, I would not use that in the future as any kind of a breeding program. But let's say that um, um, you've, you, there is a gene for this. We can't detect it, so you don't know what it is. We're going to call it the W gene. I'm making this up. So a dog that doesn't have water babies would be a big W, and one that does would be a small W. And one, and so here we've got two parents on a bunnet square, of which they're both carriers. What would you expect to get? Water baby. Quarter of the litter, water baby. That's what I'd expect to get. Um, you know, and, and I think from what I've seen on reporting, it's very rare to get a complete litter of water babies. And that would, be, that would give you some indication that this, in fact, was a genetic thing. If you just got 25% you know, water babies, that would lead you towards maybe a genetic link. If you got the whole litter had water babies, I think there's something else going on there. It's not genetic because it's just unlikely that genetics would produce um, at 100% water babies. Okay, so, but anyway, the point here is, look, you know, my general feeling about breeding dogs is this. If you've had a successful litter last time, you like the results, it ain't broke, don't fix it, breed that again. If you don't like the results, for whatever reason, one of them might be a water baby, don't pair those dogs together again. And if you paired with a different stud and you had water babies again, you might very well think about not breeding that dog in the future. So that might be another that. Okay, so that's one thing. So the other things that we alluded to would be, um, you know, a lower sodium diet. Um, but should you just generally have a low sodium diet for your dogs? Nah, probably not. I mean, you know, you look at the label. I mean, some, maybe some of the junkier foods have a high salt content, and that's not necessarily a good thing. It's, you know, high blood pressure and those kind of things that afflict us. Humans also afflict dogs. But I don't, I don't want you to take away from this that uh, you know, this is something that's a huge problem that you've got to be aware of and you need to start reacting right away because the answer is it's not. It's more a question of understanding what happened when you have a water baby, what is a reasonable approach to take, whether or not this is a survival position for the puppy, and then whether or not that breeding should be repeated or not. That's the point here. Are you going to see this? I hope not. Pretty rare pretty rare but it doesn't mean that it can't happen to you so there you go thanks for watching the video i hope you got some good information out of it i hope you subscribe to our channel brought to you by mybreedersupply.com we've been in business for over eight years we manufacture products to help you have successful breedings successful whelps and successful puppies We've introduced a new subscription service, canineconnect.com. It's a one-year subscription for 129 bucks. And for that, you get two-day free shipping on all, order, all of your orders. You get 5% off your every order that you place. And you get direct access to our support line to help you with products that you buy from us and general questions about breeding your dogs. It's really a great deal. I hope you subscribe to that. Now the disclaimer. I'm not a licensed veterinarian, I'm not a professional health giver, but I am a guy that's been breeding dogs successfully for over 20 years. Any information you get from my videos is purely at your own risk. If you have any doubts about any of this stuff, you should definitely seek the help of a licensed professional. Again, thanks for watching. Have fun with your doggies. Bye, buddy. Mm -hmm.